Hey folks, and welcome to Car Stars' 10 Wild Facts about McQuaid's 81 Dodge Ram Charger in the 1983 movie, Lone Wolf McQuaid. Fact number one. Although the exact numbers aren't known, it's estimated that around five different Dodge Ram Chargers were used in the film to portray McQuaid's vehicle throughout the movie. This estimate is derived from many subtle inconsistencies that can be spotted on the Ram Chargers throughout the film, such as some of them had sunroofs and some didn't, and other small details also, like variations of different fog lights and such. As for what year and trim the Ram Chargers were, that was the focus of many heated debates across web forums for some time up until the film was finally released in full HD just a couple of years ago. Close observations of the Ram Charger within the film in the higher resolution format led to the conclusion that the majority of the Ram Chargers used were 1981 W150 Royal SC trim models instead of the previously incorrectly assumed by most to be 1983 model Ram Chargers. Fact number two. The second generation Ram Chargers used in the film all had stock naturally aspirated carbureted V8 engines, some equipped with the 318 option and some with the 360. The 5.2 liter 318 engine put out around 170 net horsepower to either a 3-speed automatic or manual transmission. The 5.9 liter 360 engine dished out slightly more at about 180 net horsepower with the same transmission options. So, despite its portrayal as being quite quick and powerful within the film, it's not so much so in actuality. Despite neither engine being all that powerful, both the 318 and 360 were well known to be plenty durable as well as reliable, which are features that McQuaid did demonstrate accurately on screen at least. Fact number three. The early model Dodge Ram Charger, a quite tough and robust sport utility vehicle, was manufactured from 1974 to 1993, with the second generation model like McQuaid's being produced from 1981 to 1993. They were built upon a shortened wheelbase version of the D-Series Ram pickup chassis. The Ram Charger predominantly came as a two-door four-wheel drive SUV, although a two-wheel drive version was an available option too, just not nearly as popular as the 4x4s. Competing with the Chevy K5 Blazer and the Ford Bronco, the Ram Charger was a similar full-size SUV. Notably, it was discontinued in North America after the 1993 model year, but production continued in Mexico until 1996. Good condition Ram Chargers are valued around the 20K mark today, but pristine examples can fetch more than 30,000. A brief revival of the Ram Charger, coming as a third generation of sorts, was produced from 1999 to 2001. It maintained the two-door SUV design, however was a mix of aesthetics of the Dodge Ram pickup and Durango SUV models of the time, which most would say was a rather unsavory style combo. Approximately 30,000 third generation Ram Chargers were produced and sold in Mexico exclusively during its short production run, and oddly all were two-wheel drive models only, for some reason. Fact number four. Did you know that Plymouth actually once had an SUV on the market? Well, they did indeed, and they called it the Trail Duster. Produced from 1974 to 1981, it was Plymouth's one and only venture into the SUV realm. However, it was essentially a rebranded Ram Charger, sharing almost all the same parts as the first generation Ram Charger, minus some trim differences of course. Plymouth Trail Dusters are a mostly forgotten model at this point, but since they were shorter lived than the Dodge Ram Charger, they are more rare, and therefore command a bit higher base resale price of around 30 k for decent condition examples and over 40 k for pristine condition. Fact number five. As with many movies before it, the supercharger shown in the film was not functional, but just a prop device. In fact, the blower close-ups were not even from the same vehicle as none of the Ram Chargers used in the film had any engine modifications. Also, as seen in a number of other films of the era, the blower is depicted as being able to be turned on or controlled via a switch. This portrayal, while cool in a movie, is not mechanically feasible in reality, especially with a roots type blower like this. While it's not entirely impossible to have a supercharger activated and deactivated with a mechanism via a switch, it would be quite complicated and expensive to achieve, especially using 1983 technology to try to do it with. Fact number six. Chuck Norris must have imbued some of his well-known superhuman powers directly into the Ram Charger. How else could his top of the lungs yelling and throttle slamming combination have pulled the buried in a dirt pit SUV right out of the ground? 
okay, it could have just been some movie magic, I suppose, or maybe the mass consumption of beer had something to do with Chuck's superpowers in this movie. Then again, many would disagree as Chuck Norris is practically considered a god to some people. Sorry, I just couldn't help it, folks, and I needed a good laugh today anyways. For a bunch more mighty Chuck Norris humor, check out chucknorris.com to get your fill. Fact number seven. As for replicas of the Lone Wolf McQuaid Ram Charger, although there doesn't seem to be much of any decent public recreations that I could find on the web at least, this wouldn't be too tough of a movie vehicle to replicate for a dedicated enough of a fan. Pretty much you just need to find a passable condition second generation Ram Charger in a similar color, put on some black eight spoke wheels with some meaty off-road tires, a push guard with some similar lights attached, and of course the door Texas Ranger decals and roof mounted light bar. Although those last two items may affect your ability to drive it on the street legally though, so best keep those pieces easily removable. However, it seems that when it comes to replicas of McQuaid's Ram Charger, most folks opt to go the small scale model route to fill that desire rather than go all out with a potentially expensive full scale replica, which we'll get into options of shortly. Fact number eight. Where are the Lone Wolf McQuaid Ram Chargers now you ask? Well, unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be much of any info available out there on the current whereabouts of them today. However, considering how the Ram Chargers were used so vigorously within the film, most likely the majority of them were parted out and or scrapped after filming concluded. With that said, I'm sure it's possible some could have survived relatively unscathed and then resold to the public. So if anyone watching has any further info on where any of the Ram Chargers used in this movie ended up, please let us know in the comments section below. Fact number nine. Interestingly enough, Chrysler has just recently revived the Ram Charger namesake for a new variation of their Ram 1500 pickup. The all new 2025 Ram 1500 Ram Charger represents a bold leap into the future of trucks, seamlessly blending electric innovation with traditional power. At its core lies a liquid cooled 92 kilowatt hour battery pack complemented by a 130 kilowatt generator. This dynamic duo ensures optimal efficiency by converting mechanical power from the Pentastar 3.6 liter V6 gas engine into electrical energy when needed. The new Ram 1500 Ram Charger aims for an impressive 690 miles of total range, setting a new standard for electric trucks. With 663 net horsepower and 615 foot-pound of torque, it delivers exceptional pulling power too. Getting from 0 to 60 takes only 4.5 seconds impressively, so this new Ram Charger pickup combines sustainability with excellent performance. I got to say that sounds like a smart way to set up an electric truck, and it will be interesting to see how it does in the current truck market as well. Fact number 10. Looking into scale model McQuaid Ram Charger replica options, probably due to the fact that Lone Wolf McQuaid was a fairly low budget film, there was no official merchandise released for it. So, that leaves us with having to seek out similar scale second generation Ram Charger models to start with as a base of customization to create a replica. However, after some extensive searching, it appears there are not any second generation Ram Charger model kits available on the current retail market unfortunately. Just a few overpriced first generation Ram Charger vintage kits on eBay only. The one and only second generation Ram Charger model I could even find at all is this diecast 1 43rd scale 1991 Ram Charger from a brand called Diagostini. These seem to be primarily sold on eBay and typically go for around the $60 mark. Consequently, that just leaves us the option of either getting the second generation 1991 1 43rd scale diecast model and customizing it into a replica, which would be the most accurate way to go in this case or just use a first generation 1980 Ram Charger model kit as a base and modify it to look like a second generation replica as this person did for theirs here, but that's not as accurate of course. And for those of you who haven't seen it yet, I have recently created my own diecast car channel named Show and Tell Diecast that I display and detail my diecast models that I now add videos to weekly also. I will include a link to the new channel in the video description below as well for those interested. Well, there you have it folks. Thanks for watching and make sure to hit that subscribe button if you like what you saw here. You guys are all great. See you next time.